Hello, this is Axel Paxel, back with uh, another uh, tutorial uh, video. Uh, this time I will be painting the chest piece on the Dung Beetle Knight from Kingdom Death Monster. Uh, before I do anything else, uh, I would like to personally uh, give a shout out to my first Patreon supporters. Uh, Marie Roland, you were the first and um, I just want to thank you so much for for being the first Patreon supporter. It means the world to me. Um, and I also got a second uh, Patreon supporter, uh, Wouter Stevens. Um, the fact that both of you have uh, supported me on Patreon makes me believe that uh, what I'm doing is uh, of interest to at least some people and uh, it it uh, promotes uh, me in a way that I can perhaps do this uh, more frequently in the future um, and um, yeah it, it just means a lot to me so uh, thank you so much uh, going back uh, to the video, uh, uh, you can see that I made uh, uh, set up my uh, wet palette. Um, the colors that I'm painting with is uh, the white is uh, Primacryl uh, Titanium White from Schminke. You can use any white you, you like. You don't have to use that particular brand. Model color Ivory, for instance, from, uh, from Vallejo is a good uh, substitute. Um, the black is uh, model color uh, black from uh, Vallejo and the uh, blue is uh, model color uh, turquoise from Vallejo. So you can see the hair, uh, I'm going for a sort of like a metallic look on the chest piece because that will contrast well with the warm colors I have on it from uh, before uh, that I've already painted on. So uh, what I do then is I uh, mix uh, white with black, as you just saw me do do there, and um, and I also added some uh, blue or model color turquoise into the mix because I want the metal to appear a little bit uh, cold. If you simply were to use white and black, which you could do. Um, I, I think the metal would look a little bit bland. So I, I tend to always use uh, a little bit of blue in order to tint it towards the, the cold side. And uh, I'm also right now mixing the highlight color. What I tend to do then is I, I uh, use my dirty old uh, mixing brush. Uh, and I use some of the paint that I've already mixed uh, in order to create the base for my uh, highlight color. And then I just add more white. Uh, if you only add white and not uh, blue as well, uh, the the highlight color tends to be a little bit too desaturated, which is what white does to a paint. It desaturates it. So I always tend to, uh, or not always, but in this case, I wanted to add a little bit of the blue as well. Um, so it becomes the right uh, the right uh, color. Uh, and you can see the contrast between the two colors on the on the wet palette as well. It uh, it's much brighter. It's not close to white in any way, but it's much brighter. And when applied to the model, it will actually almost appear white, which is kind of interesting. You can also see that I added some water to the to the paints as well on this. Uh, this is necessary because if you were to paint with uh, with a thick consistency, you can actually paint texture uh, on the model itself, and that is um, not that it, it can look uh, like like you you can actually see that you've applied it too thick if you have applied it too thick, and if you do that, it's hard to go back. Um, by painting over because that will just add layers and uh, you you lose the details uh, in the texture of the model so um, like say for instance if you, if you were to do anything wrong with the um, 
uh, with a layer paint uh, like hair, it's no problem. I can always go over it again without losing the texture. If you applied the paint too thickly, however, you would you would do that mistake, and it would be uh, very very hard to go go back from. So, uh, yeah. You can see that I'm uh, I'm not going into all the deep recesses of the um, of the face itself. Uh, that is because I all I want some parts of the face, like the deep recesses, to stay uh, to stay black because that will add contrast to the model itself. So now I'm just going over the um, with the base color that I mixed. There are some uh, cuts here, uh, just some uninteresting parts. Uh, I've try also tried to to cut away the the video where the um, where I accidentally painted the model off cam. I don't uh, I, I, I didn't do that a lot, but uh, it's it makes no sense to actually show that, so yeah. Plus this part is, um, what can I say, rather straightforward. You just go over the whole uh, piece uh, with, uh, with the same color and uh, you try to not hit the uh, armor underneath because obviously if you do, then you will have to go over it. Um, which is no problem. Here you can see the consistency on the um, on my finger. It's uh, I wouldn't call it actually a layer paint. It's more like a light base. Um, here I'm using the side of the brush to hit those very small, um, almost like finger-like uh, protruding. Uh, things that actually um, I imagine uh, hold the chest piece onto the onto the scale armor, or that's what it looks like. Hitting these small spots is uh, is actually a little bit difficult because they're just like so small. So you have to be very careful. Use the side of the brush and just grace it downwards. Um, if you press too hard, you will smear paint uh, on the surface uh, next to it, which is the armor. And um, if you do that in a lot of, a lot of places, it Nah, <laughs> it can look uh, a bit like splotchy, yeah. And I actually did that on at least one uh, part uh, on the other side, uh, the upper, the upper right one. I accident, I accidentally hit a bit of the scale armor. Um, So here I'm just carefully uh, putting the base color uh, in all the parts because if you if you were to do that, what I'm doing now fast and you miss some spots, it's going to look weird once you start to apply uh, the um, the layers uh, with the um, with the highlight color. Going over those spots afterwards, um, you just which you could uh, just creates more jobs. So I just tend to be very uh, thorough uh, when I go over with the uh, with the base uh, color. And as you can see now, it looks very um, <laughs> the chest piece itself looks very uninteresting. It's just one color, and um, it contrasts the uh, what I've done with the other scales too much. So it need it. It's it, it's actually screaming for uh, some uh, some highlights. Um, 
following the same uh, light source, of course, which you should always uh, do. I'm uh, I'm picking out the small um, protruding parts of the of the face here, um, just carefully gracing over the texture, similar to the style of uh, I was using on the on the scales, wiping uh excess paints excess excess paint off my paintbrush and just picking out the small details with the with the side of the brush if you were to do the use the tip to to uh, pick out the, the details which you could do it's easier to um, accidentally hit other spots so I, for this type of work, I tend to use the side of the brush. If you if you did this with too much paint on the brush, then you would also uh, smear it uh, over a larger area. Um, so that's why I I um, I paint on my fingernail nail first to get off uh, most of the uh, most of the paint. <laughs> <clears throat> my voice is a little bit better uh, today uh, which is uh, <laughs> which is nice um, makes uh, makes it easier for me to make these uh, tutorials so you can see the consistency on this paint it's um, it's uh, is this actually the same highlight color yeah, I think it is, but I think I end up using, um, yeah, I'm going for making a somewhat uh, wetter um, highlight color. You can see the consistency there. It's more, more uh, like a layer uh, paint now. On my thumb, you can actually see the paint uh, go into the recesses of my uh, my thumb, uh, which watery paint tend to do on the model uh, itself also. So here I want to make uh, create a smooth uh, transition between the lower parts of the line that goes to the main chest piece uh, and the upper parts in order to create some uh, contrast between the dark and the light side. So here I'm uh, moving the brush from top to bottom because I want most paint to be left on the bottom of the uh, chest piece. Still pretty rough. You can see that there are actually some some um, some gaps there um, between the but if you go over the the spot the same spot multiple times with the uh, same consistency of paint the the layers of the paint tends to build up where you leave the brush each time um, so that part will in this case always be wider I'm sorry for the headpiece being slightly uh, obscuring the the um, uh, the chest piece that I'm working on here, I had a, I had a hard time um, holding the model in my hand while simultaneously ensuring that uh, it was uh, in uh, in view, but um, the movement itself is very it's very straightforward. Um, I'm starting towards. I'm starting where I want the transition to be between dark and light and then I'm moving the brush to the uh, uh, chest piece. Doing this multiple times of course in order to build up the layers. And um, you still have wet paint on your brush when you do this so you don't have to apply new paint uh, or stick your brush into the uh, into your wet palette for each time because you still have you still have paint on your brush even if it's even if it has already dried on the model itself.
Uh, this way you have more control. For each time you put your uh, brush into one of the uh, colors on the wet palette, uh, you lose control because, or I wouldn't say you lose control, but you have to check the consistency of the paint uh, and wipe off excess paint for each time you, you do that. If you were to paint from without checking first, um, you could have an unfavorable result. Um, yeah, so here you can see that the layer is, uh, the layering is slightly coming, uh, coming together. Here you're seeing me that I'm actually going over some of the dark parts of the face with the base, uh, with the base color. Um, some parts that would be, um, would not be obscured in, or in shadow. Um, so it would look unnatural if these spots were uh, kept uh, black. <clears throat> Obviously, painting like this is, um, it's, it's, it takes time, which you can obviously tell, but the result is very um, cool. <laughs> if you were to paint for like a tabletop, uh, most people would just uh, put on a base coat and maybe possibly go over like some few spots uh, in order to get like some um life coming to the model painting like this takes uh takes more time of course so here i'm mixing in uh a slightly um brighter highlight but i gotta be careful here because uh if you if you, if the highlight is too white uh, then um, it will steal so much focus uh, for the viewer. Uh, what, I be, what I mean by that, I don't want the chest piece to be the main focal area on this model. I want it to be the uh, scale armor. So if I were to pu like really push the, the metal look on this, uh, on this chest piece, which I won't do, then the main focal point of the model would actually be uh, the chest piece, which I don't want. So, um, so yeah, the highlights work like that. The, the areas that you highlight the most or use the lightest paint on, especially if you're using pure white, will always be at the main focal uh, points uh, for attention when you first look or glance at the model. Um, And you have, if you have too many of those white spots, then the attention would uh, fade. Like uh, it wouldn't. Uh, the fewer areas that you have that are, that are really pushing the the light versus dark look, uh, the better. I'm ensuring that this paint is very thin because it's it's so light that if it were like thick it would <laughs> it would look terrible on the model. Um, so this is actually like a light, uh, almost like a glaze actually, but it's I would say it's still um, a light layer uh, consistency. It's it's very watery. And it does almost doesn't leave a mark unless I have a lot of paint on the brush itself. That was too much uh, paint, so I wiped some of it off. And of course, uh, I only tend to hit the uh, the area that I want to be the brightest on this model. If light were to come from on top, this these would be the areas that that would be uh, brightest. So I'm, I'm hitting those. Uh, 
some painters on uh, on YouTube, I can mention that, um, tend to have lots of different uh, cuts here and there. Um, and I, I guess for some people that that's really great because you see that um, uh, progress so fast. But when you actually sit down and try to replicate those results, you haven't seen the entire process. You haven't seen the boring parts, <laughs> if I could say that. Uh, and the boring parts are important too, because that's where, that's actually where the magic happens. It just doesn't go from A to F. You have to see the parts in between. So when doing these tutorial videos, yeah, they're a bit long. Uh, I realize that, but uh, you can actually see the... Um, uh, the whole process instead of just uh, showing you some key bits, which, um, yeah, I th I think that this is more um, conducive or uh, to learning. If if you want really want to learn, it's better to watch it from the whole process rather than some some key spots. Uh, but if you have an other uh, opinion regarding this, please let me know. Um, I could make shorter videos, tutorials as well. Um, maybe do some more cuts. Um, I don't know. Um, you can let me know. I will take all comments under uh, consideration, of course. <clears throat> so now... Uh, I want to push uh, the contrast between the light and the dark uh, areas on the chest piece some more. So for this, I'm uh, I'm using uh, tank brown from um, from uh, Vallejo. This is a uh, from their air range, which is supposed to go in an um, um, air spray paint thingy uh, I don't use those I always use my uh, brush airbrush it's called <laughs> the word for it uh, eluded me uh, so yeah um, I want to maximize the contrast between light and dark um, so what I'm doing is that I'm, I'm painting with um, with the with the tank brown the areas that I want to be in uh, in shadow. Going over these areas will will uh, increase the contrast between the light and the dark parts of the of the chest piece. Be sure to water down the tank brown. It's it's already quite um, watered down because it's an air paint, but the pigmentation is really high uh, so what that means is that it will it will still create a lot of um, uh, colors color uh, if you were to use it straight from the bucket and you would actually end up ruin the paint job so uh, that you've done so far so um, yeah you should uh, you should water it down mm, I guess it's on a ratio of um, Maybe, yeah, actually, maybe maybe one and a half part water and one part paint. About that. So here I'm uh, edge uh, highlighting. Edge highlighting here is uh, really important actually because it really helps the um, details pop out, which you obviously want to do. Going over the same areas with uh, with a um, with a layer uh, consistency will will make it appear that. Um, so that uh, it doesn't, um, uh, the transitions are smooth. So here I'm painting in some some small dabs of uh, of the brightest color. For this actually, for this work, it could actually be a higher uh, or more um, 
not so watery consistency because you can see that those uh, small dabs that I did there actually just went away uh, because the consistency of the paint is too uh, watery so here I'm going for the the line that uh, separates the sides of the uh, of the armor That will help um, create a more three-dimensional look to the uh, to the the part that's going downwards towards the face. Here I'm uh, reassessing if I'm happy with it or if I should paint uh, some parts uh, uh, differently. It's actually kind of interesting when when I do those stops because, um, like I d I don't have a clear image of how this is going to look in in my head. I have a somewhat of a vision for it. Um, Hi, Bruce. But this can change during the painting process as well. So uh, it's important to not ha not be like dead set on a certain look. Um, an important part of the process is actually st stopping and uh, and reassess what what you are doing and if you're happy with the look, um, then stop. <laughs> and if you're if you're not, if you see room for potential, keep going. Wiping uh, here. I'm going back back with the um, tank brown. Here I'm very applying the paint very carefully because if I were to paint over the the edge highlighting or the line in the middle, I would have to redo that because it it will contrast. Um, it will leave a mark, of course. Going over the same spots with the tank brown will build up the layers and make them appear darker uh, in the recesses which is what you want uh, what I'm doing there is I'm just um dabbing the side of the brush uh, on top of the uh, side of the uh, the edge uh, highlighting there um, this will help with the uh, this this will draw attention towards that uh, that spot and uh, it will look a bit more interesting Yeah, and since the paint is so thin, it doesn't become too overwhelming either. Trying to adjust the camera here in order to get the right um, brightness. Can you say that? It's actually pretty much uh, uh, done now, apart from the eyes, but. Um, it's perf perfectly fine to stop here, but uh, um, the rest of the work is just fine tuning, actually. Areas that I want to be uh, in shadow, I go over with the um, tank brown, and uh, areas that I feel are need more highlight, I tend to um, I go over with a highlight color.
if you add too much of the dark uh the the brown the tank brown on the uh <clears throat> on the metal it will appear uh a little bit too too brown actually which i think my painting now is actually on the border of uh becoming too too brown um Yeah, so I think I should stop here. <laughs> Actually, I don't. I don't think I. Yeah, I don't think I. I further applied any brown there. Uh, so here I'm. Um, there obviously was a cut. Uh, readjusting the camera, I'm going to be painting the uh, eyes now. Um, Yeah, because I want I want some uh, light glow emanating from the uh, from the eyes to make it appear as as like the the heart is there or something something is going on there, and the and the eyes on the model now is very uninteresting, so um, so yeah, some eyes with with a glow around the eyes will uh, will appear uh, um, make it appear really cool. Um, yeah, so here I'm actually making a highlight color. I'm making a very bright highlight color, perhaps the brightest uh, that I've gone on the model so far. And that is because, uh, and, and they will appear too bright when I apply this, uh, this paint uh, on the model. Um, but these areas will be toned down when I go over it with um, with a pink or slightly reddish uh, glaze afterwards. That will make it appear more um, more more pink, and it will tone down the brightness. Y you will see. <laughs> Makes uh, perhaps it will make more sense once you see it. Testing the consistency of the paint, which is very important to do before you apply it. I imagine it's a little bit like um, the testing the consistency of the paint before you apply it. It's a kind I I like uh, an analogy uh, where um, like if you if you were to uh, cook dinner or make some food you you don't serve the food without actually tasting different uh different parts of it or maybe you shouldn't maybe some do but maybe you shouldn't <laughs> uh and if if the dish needs more like salt or whatever you you add it uh, and you don't get a perfect uh, result without um without actually tasting the the food or while you are cooking uh, it's a bit like painting as well you have to test the the consistency of the um, of the paint before you uh, apply it and i didn't do that there <laughs> actually as you as you saw perfect uh timing for me <laughs> to be saying this but uh yeah So here you can actually see I made a mistake. Uh, you can see the the right eye now. Uh, I smeared some uh, some white paint on there, which uh, did not look good at all. So I have to tone that down with uh, with base color. Uh, yeah, I don't cut away my mistakes either. <laughs> so uh, you can actually see I'm. I will I will uh, do my best to to point them out when I'm doing it, but uh, yeah, it's not like uh, I paint perfectly uh, every every time. <laughs> Far from it, actually. So here I'm just uh, correcting. If you still have the paints on your wet palette, you can always go back. If you make a mistake, you can just go back. 
most times or you can always go back but uh if if you have to do that after you apply the like glazes and stuff it um becomes harder because uh that will uh be another color than what you actually have on your wet palette because the glaze will alter the um the color on the, uh on the paint underneath it yeah um yeah i actually explained that with the uh, my intentions for for brightening up this uh these areas here i will go over with uh with a glaze and tone uh, tone them down and uh the parts i'm hitting is the air uh, are the areas around the eyes <clears throat> that part is uh, optional you don't have to do it but uh, um, when you apply the glaze afterwards uh, the the glow effect will be larger because you're you're glazing over an area that is brighter than uh, than what it uh, what it was before. Again, because the the light underneath will will um, will shine more. So here I'm uh, uh, just picking out the eyes. Um, as careful as I can. These details are, um, these eyes are very small. So yeah, there I, I painted, I hit the side there of the eye, uh, which I, sh I shouldn't have done. It's no problem, I will fix it. But um, yeah, when you paint small details like this, it's very easy to, um, to accidentally hit areas that you shouldn't uh, the red color is uh, Mephiston red from uh, games workshop a model air range so uh, for use in an airbrush actually but that's no problem you can you can paint with it normally with a brush as well it's just that the pigmentation is different so actually from for for this for picking out the eyes like i do here i'm not um i'm not using uh any water uh, i'm uh, uh painting straight out of the bottle bottle after I put it on my uh, wet palette. So here I'm uh, mixing in the uh, glaze, the glaze color. <laughs> Carefully not hitting the <laughs> the model with my mixing brush that would totally ruin the whole model i actually shouldn't be painting directly above the wet palette either but i don't have two cameras uh, and for you to see the palette while i'm painting this is actually the only way because uh yeah <laughs> um you shouldn't paint directly above your wet palette for obvious reasons if you drop your model which i actually constantly do that's uh that's how the the uh, left leg on the <laughs> dung beetle knight uh, fell off uh, i'm going to reattach that later of course but uh it could you could actually accidentally drop your uh mini on top of your paint uh and if that were to happen on an area that you've already painted like just right uh, that would be very uh <laughs> annoying mm. to say to say it mildly uh, 
Um, yeah, so here I'm, I think I'm, uh, I'm just testing. I'm holding the model centerpiece, but I'm actually also uh, trying to uh, adjust the uh, um, consistency of the glaze. A glaze is a very thin paint. Um, this particular paint was perhaps mixed with uh, uh, one part uh, paint per 1.5 point. Uh, um, parts uh, water, but you have to keep in mind that the, the paint was rather uh, thin to begin with. If you were to use another uh, like base color, uh, like model color black or uh, model color turquoise, you would have to need uh, a lot more more water. Uh, but for but for the Mephiston red, uh, I don't think you need more than perhaps two por two parts water uh, for one part paint depending on how much of the schmink uh, you mix in, because the schmink is uh, very thick. So yeah, uh, that that might be a little bit confusing actually. So um, just check your consistency. When you paint uh, on your fingernail, you should almost not see any paint there at all. If that what if that's what happens, then you're <laughs> you're uh, ready to go. If you leave a strong mark of paint, then then going over with a glaze will uh, totally ruin your your uh, your look on the model because you will smear paint everywhere. Doesn't look very good as of right now. Um, this is a perfect example of just okay it doesn't look good now but uh, it can look good you just have to keep on uh, working with it so I'm adding more of the of the glaze um, trying to pull the brush towards the center of the eye and uh, and hitting the parts uh, around it I'm sorry for uh, painting outside of the camera angle here. You can see how much this is actually zoomed in by looking at my fingers. Um, it, it's, it gets better. I, uh, I will have it in focus for, uh, for most parts. So yeah, I'm pulling the, I'm pulling the brush, uh, mainly towards the center of the uh, the eye. This will of course um, make the the red appear less red as you see the the right center of uh, the eye uh, no, the center on the right eye appears more uh, um, desaturated compared to the left eye and that's because you've glazed over uh, that's because I've glazed over with the um, with the uh, the this the, the desaturated glaze. So here I'm just gently applying um, more and more uh, of the of the glaze, and because it's so thin. It's no problem going over it. Now I'm uh, painting in the red eye with the uh, clear uh, or undiluted uh, Mephiston red. So it's starting to come together now, but um, I'm going over the eye several times because that will add more intensity to the redness of, uh, of the eye.
zoomed in like this, you can actually see uh, lots of mistakes, or not perhaps mistakes, but um, it's very unnatural to see uh, a model from from this um, this zoomed in. So here I'm uh, applying the um, the uh, glaze. I'm just dabbing it on there, and because the the consistency is so thin, uh, it's no uh, a big uh, big problem. If you were to do this with a base color or uh, with a layer, even this would look horrendous because he would be splashing paint all over the place. This is, of course, uh, to uh, to add to the glow. If you were to simply paint a red eye without the glow, it would look um, it would not look as good. So here I uh, painted in some more uh, of the of the glaze color. I had a little bit more paint on the uh, uh, brush, so that's why it left a clearer mark. It's still the same paint. Now I'm trying to hit the eye without hitting other parts. Going over the same spots. I should actually wait a little bit longer for the paint to dry before I um, before I go over the same spot. I should have waited like maybe two or three more seconds between each time I applied it. So here we can see that it's coming together. But I've also when I hit the center of the eye, the left eye, I also hit uh, a small spot underneath it, which uh, makes it look a little bit um, dodgy or I guess. Um, so I will attempt to uh, correct for this uh, later. Again, going over the eyes multiple times will, um, will really uh, make the eye appear or more alive the eyes. It's near the end of the video now. Um, yeah, thank you so much uh, for uh, watching the whole video. If you're uh, not one of my Patreon supporters, <clears throat> which I only have two, so most of you aren't. Uh, you get some great benefits uh, if you decide to support me. There are only uh, for the first ten, you can uh, uh, support me with uh, one dollar, uh, and this will give you uh, some great re rewards. Uh, you will uh, get personal advice on painting your own dung beetle night uh, or the model you are currently working on. I will give you tips and tricks. Uh, so that's the first uh, reward. Uh, the second reward is that you will get your name um, as an honorable mention at the end of all my future videos. Um, so that's the second uh, benefit. And the third is that you actually get to watch my tutorials one week ahead of time uh, from when they are uh, publicly um released on uh, on youtube and it helps me a lot if you were to support me <clears throat> so yeah as a really special thanks go out to my first two supporters marie rowland and uh, water stevens thank you so much for supporting my my work <laughs>